Hello, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Luz Marina Hoyos Vivas. Dr. Hoyos Vivas is a community psychologist and early years educator. Luz Marina recently completed her doctoral program at the University of Concordia, Quebec in Canada. She has worked as a consultant for the Colombia Ministry of Education and for regional and national government organizations, advising on the very topics of her presentation today. Dr. Ollos Vivas has participated in collaborative publications with the University of Alberta and Concordia University in Canada that includes contributions to chapters uh, dedicated to Colombia for the books Shades of Globalization and the Formation of Teachers today shown here in the slide. Today, Luz Marina will share the collaborative project De Cero a Siempre, From Zero to Forever, with members of Embera Chami, indigenous peoples at the Wasiruma Reserve in the Valle del Cauca region in Colombia. This framework draws on the colonizing intersectoral practices in early childhood education and care and beyond. First of all, thank you for the invitation to present my reflections and studies on the Colombian public policy in early childhood education and care. I'm speaking from Palmira, near Cali, in Colombia, a country situated at the very northwest of South America. I'm going to speak about the national public policy from CEDO to forever issued in Colombia to ensure integral services for children from pregnancy up to five years. I'm speaking from my position as an academic, specifically from the studies I did for my PhD dissertation. It is important to say that I was part of some of the cross-sectoral working groups that collectively created the national strategy from zero to forever for a specific government period. Later, this strategy became a national public policy. To contextualize the public policy, it is important to know about the history of the services for young children. As some authors have pointed out, the conception of childhood is not static. It changes through time, and this is evident in the changes of public policies. In Colombia, the first government national programs for early childhood education and care started to be delivered in 1974, and there have been changes from that moment on. Well, as I said, the first programs were created in 1975, they started as a response to the involvement of women in paid labor and were mainly aimed at helping families to take care of their children. Children's development was important, but it was not the main goal of the program. Then, children were passive receptors of services and their families were limited to take their children to the services. From 1975, the programs expanded progressively by the implementation of community homes. These are based services in home, with, in which one mother takes care of 14 children, but according to some national evaluation, these services were not of good quality. The participation of the community was there, but it progressively disappeared because their voices were not taken into account. When the law from zero to forever was issued, the conception of childhood had changed and the programs should change too. Well, this law recompiles the changes on the conception of childhood during, during the previous years. This includes the recognition of children and their families as subjects not used as receptors of services. The recognition of children's development as culturally situated understanding the country as multicultural, which involves 
65 different ethnic groups, including indigenous people, uh, Afro-Colombian people, and other ethnic groups. There is also a holistic conception of childhood that leads to deliver articulated cross-sector services. Another important feature is the recognition of the importance of the delivery of quality services. The conception of family also changed from seeing them as users and receptors of services to be active participants in the design of the programs. The recognition of children's rights was also very important. And in general, the public policy looked to guarantee the continuity of the programs and services, as well as the budget to deliver them. So there are some quotes in the slides that you can read. Well, the public policy is being implemented and there are many changes in the perception of childhood in the country, but there are also some tensions. Some of them are between the recognition of cultural differences and the concern with best practices and with the search for quality. The quality concerns creates a tension between the laws and the practices that recognize differences and the importance of cultural responsiveness in ECC. The idea that standardized practices would improve the quality of services for early childhood prevents the development of culturally responsive education practices. The expectations that the good quality education will bring development to the country and communities lead to a focus on preparation for schooling, meaning school readiness, and for uniform outcomes based on the idea of ages and developmental stages. So many national practices remain framed by North American and European theories, ignoring the enormous impact of cultures on the conceptions of childhood and children's development. So this expansion of a standardized program obstructs the transmission of traditional knowledge in the, in, the, in the communities, especially in those indigenous communities. I feel that this advice is also for the Colombian government. And what I say is that the design of culturally responsive programs for young children requires the families and communities participation. But this participation should be meaningful for them. And it is necessary to overcome widespread ideas of at-risk families, including beliefs that parents and families are not interested in their children's education. It is important to design education programs grounded on local knowledge by the construction of new epistemological places to produce knowledge, which, in, which means the recognition and use of local ways of engaging in research, not just the academic ways. 
in the research that I work with the Wasiruma community, they say walk in the world. They mean, that means through dialogue. And we also include some other activities uh, like mural painting, using oral traditions, and Minga de Pensamiento, which is a kind of local meeting in which the communities make decisions. So we had a kind of inter-epistemic research that involved a dialogue among different cultures and different ways of knowing. I bring some examples from the Wasiruma community. You can find some quotes here in the slide. It is important to say that they are they have a very different conception of childhood. For example, they do not understand life split into cycles, but as a continuum in in community and family life. So young children are always free and there are not space specialized spaces for children's education. Children participate in community life. The spiritual life of this community is guided by living and non-living beings. And this activity of seeding constitutes one of the main activities for children because it allows them to be in contact with nature with the mother air and it maintains the culture alive. Some families must prepare children for the engagement in community activities and the transmission of values such as a good relationship with mother earth and with nature. So seeding involves a relation with nature and with mother earth. Taking this into account, we design a proposal for early childhood education and care called Seeds of Life, which includes the exploration of the environment, literacy, arts, and play. The exploration of the environment includes the exploration of nature through building gardens and to have a relationship with alive and non-alive beings. It, this allows children to have a good relation with Mother Earth, with the law of origin, which is the story of the Karabi and the Embera Chami community. It also includes a good relation with the territory, with nature, with the spirituality, and with the local authorities, which are the local leaders, the partera, who is the midwife, the haibana, and other local leaders who are the transmitters of oral tradition. So they speak the oral tradition in Embera Chami, and this, uh, this allows the community to remain in their own culture and to maintain the language alive, uh, alive. They also wanted children to understand and to be in contact with children literature, which means that they can read and write, which is an excellent way to maintain a good relationship with the majority culture, which is very important for them too. Uh, arts includes rituality, dance, music, working with clay, making baskets, and weaving, which are very 
um, important activities in the community. And play is not a separated activity for children, but they like this because they feel that this allows children to share with others and to transmit local values as well as being in contact with the majority culture. So this was our design. Thank you so much, Dr. Luz Marina Hoyos Vivas for sharing this project of which you speak with so much passion and that provides us with unique and important insights for our conversation moving towards an integrative early childhood education and care framework in Canada. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you.